Hello and welcome to Dells Gaming and this is from the Depths Designer and in this episode I'm going to be looking at missiles and what I use in various situations and some of the changes that have happened in recent updates and some of the effects that I've seen and for, for um, testing I'm going to use this little new little ship design uh, Griffin Destroyer which is a new little design I've got working on not completed um, basically the rear end of this is is what I'm going to use for putting in various missiles for various targets just to show what's uh, happening and and will end up being the area which I change depending on the ship's role whether it's intended to be anti-submarine anti-air anti-ship etc um, and it has got some a rubberized um, someone did put in in uh, the comments in the previous video about rubberize, rubberizing the hull of the ship which this does have and it does have an effect when it comes to decoys just a quick one here in that my main so, uh, sonar decoy if we go up here has a strength of 2000 that means if I keep my ship below 2000 if I just turn it on quickly you'll notice my um, sonar detections about 1400 so that means that in general um, I will have a you know the, the torpedoes will go for the decoy um, instead of the ship when it fires so that is a use for your rubber on ships to keep your ship sonar um, below your decoys strength Anyway, let's get on to missiles. So first of all, we're going to look at surface-to-surface -surface missiles. So generally I break up the, the, the uh, missiles into surface-to-surface, surface-to-air, and surface-to-submarine. Now you have got air-to-air -air and sub-to-surface, blah, blah, etc. But I'm not going to look at those in these videos. I may look at those as a separate um, issue. So primarily also my philosophy when I try to look at defenses or uh, attacking using missiles I tend to try and look at zones you have your long range zone which is out to three and a half thousand then your middle range which is out to say two thousand and short range out to a thousand and each of those ranges has different priorities so first of all the long range the long range missiles as you can see uh, here i'm i tend to use medium missiles about eight blocks length and their priority is to get as much damage down range um, as possible to try and get an early um, kill or hit against the uh, target speed is n not really a priority um, and these would be set to primarily hit against um, large vessels only. Now, an example here, we've got an active radar seeker, and you'll see there's a lot of explosives and EMP. This, these missiles are designed against the white flares, so the damage output here has been specifically designed in my view what seems to work quite well against the um, uh, white flares, which is, happens to be a lot of EMP. Um, but you'll see that only one fin doesn't need to be um, highly um, agile against the intended large target system a bit going against some of the new items we have in here so we're using an active radar seeker for this long range because it tends to be more reliable at hitting larger long range targets target prediction guidance now the reason I've got that in there that also means I don't need a one turn at the beginning when you're using radar uh, you don't always need a one turn when you're using radar anyway but it does mean it will head in the direction of the target where that it's going to intercept so it works out the current velocity etc and, and, and angle of the target and tries to plot an intercept course and I use that quite substantially in quite a lot of my missiles because I find it's useful certainly for surface to surface targets signal processor now that's a new um, item 
for missiles and it means that it reduces the decoy missiles by 15%. Now, to be honest, active radar decoys could still be a problem so we might as well use it in these quite expensive missiles and then yes we need regulators to make this last so this is a 60 seconds and the thruster is fairly low so this is going to be slow but long range now we'll just give ourselves a little target which is out at about 2700 meters now i use these as vertical launch and they you can see the targeting lines have already started to t to target the uh, bruiser which I'm using out here as a target. They don't need to be fast for the range we're going at and they're going to make their way in towards the target. You see um, I have also set these to, to go quite high up onto the target. Now I've done that on the actual missile by reducing how long um, the start delay make sure the start delay is quite high and also the guidance activation delay that means it will try to aim at the tar you know um, go quite high before it turns on target so the missiles are still making their way in And they come down quite nicely onto the top of the target in this particular instance, constantly adjusting their target for the to to hit. So, yep, it fulfills a quite heavy impact roll um, against the target. So one disadvantage of these long-range missiles and the fact that they have a delay before they guide towards the target is once the target's quite close, they don't become that, that useful. Um, but they work quite well against most targets um, out to the long range. And I'm just going to turn these off and then the next missile is a is more, shall we say, medium range. Now, um, in this instance, I've then they use a small missiles another two ways to get damage on target in my view is one big missiles big warheads or lots of small missiles both have their own advantages um, if a, a ship has got good defenses sometimes lots of small missiles can be better than one big missile one big missile could get taken out lots of missiles at least a couple might get through so uh, eventually it's wearing down the target so more and more get through again this is a very similar build of um, uh, missile just doesn't last as long and has a much it is much faster um, and has a shorter time before activation um, this has got a, a little bit of a shorter range this will still actually go out to quite a, a long range three and a half thousand um, so it's not a sh short range missile uh, it's still quite long range it's just an alternative way of attacking the same sort of ship now a biggest advantage on missiles if you're not aware is the loading time of missiles is relative to the size of the missile so this is eight medium blocks whereas this is only four small blocks which means this will reload significantly faster than the medium which means we'll get more missiles per minute out for want of a better word although the power of the the um, missile if we look on here we'll notice that the you know HE damage is 8,000 for two explosive blocks and on this one the he damage is 800 so that's a tenth of the um size but there is four of these missiles so that means the damage will be 3200 so that's still less than half but then if you allow for double the the fire rate we're getting up to a similar sort of um time period for damage it is slightly lower than the mediums 
but has has some advantages and takes up less space as you can see here so this one is again another longish range but we'll see how this one goes against the same target so we've got them firing up and then they will fire out at the target now these are much lower level the way i have set up the um, delay and they are slightly more agile so they come in a little bit lower whereas the medium ones previously used to come in at the top of the ship these will come down below now one other elements is I put I put quite a large stagger fire on my missiles here especially if they've got explosives on board um, because the latest version if the explosion of a missile in front will knock off the targeting of the missile behind uh, so it may knock it off target so you want a, a reasonable half to one second stagger on the missiles I tend to find if they're explosive is, is a good idea. Some of the largest ones I put up to now with the latest um, stagger you can put like a two second delay which I, I quite like for the mediums and I think I use about one second on these particular missiles. So one thing you'll notice with the radar um, is they target a random block on the vessel rather than necessarily all hitting the same particular block that can be good at times just hitting random blocks but obviously if you are you know, want to kill something quickly it's, it's worth having it all targeting the same spot to be able to drill through the armor and uh, destroy the target quicker quite simply which brings us down to the third missile in our uh, little group I was talking about hitting a particular point and what I find rather useful for that is the laser emitter now the laser emitter is very simple obviously it aims a laser it's a laser guided aims a laser and everything hits the point that the laser is aiming at now the downside of laser is it purely relies upon the ship's detection systems so um, it, I tend to find at longer ranges it wavers around all depending on how good your detection is of the enemy missile or oh, sorry enemy missile the enemy ship um, so I tend to find it's good at short range with the latest build. Older builds of uh, from the depths, the laser had just about 100% accuracy. So it was always pointing at the target. But then once the uh, detection system come, came in and you started to get a inaccuracy factor on the laser, it sort of reduced in its effectiveness in, in my view. So seeing that in practice, so you can see the lasers sort of having a bit of a problem trying to lock onto the target here. Right, it's got targeting again. So now the lasers. So if the ship loses targeting on the ship um, or just cannot get that accuracy, the laser uh, will stop pointing at the ship. Now one good bit is all the missiles all hit the same point at wherever that laser is targeting at which does mean that you can basically drill through armor for want of a better word as long as you have that accuracy um, on the target if you lose accuracy then basically uh, your missiles will will miss so there's some of the surface ones I use now why don't I use infrared? Um, I found infrared on surface targets to be unreliable. Sometimes it goes for the wrong target because it just goes for the the, the um, hottest target. It's um, and also if at long range using the one turn etc. Um, I found that at sometimes at distance it just will not uh, lock onto some of the smaller targets that you get at range 
The other item that, that could be used for the long range is the, if I find it in here, is the remote prediction guidance. Now, to me that has the same issue that the um, lasers have in that it does rely on your targeting accuracy of your vessel. If your vessel um, doesn't have a very good targeting solution then your remote guidance will not have a good targeting solution. I tend to, I do use them but I tend to use them on just very large missiles against very large targets which are basically static. Um, uh, they can be used in short range but we may have a look at those but I don't I don't use them that much myself. So the next selection of missiles are all surface to sub or they could be against surface targets because they're torpedoes so they will fire against um, ships that are on the surface as well. Once again the explosive or warhead package is up to debate but one advantage that underwater uh, torpedoes have is that the explosive power is increased due to pressure wave or other factors so basically the HE damage of a exploding um, explosive is actually increased because it is underwater. You don't see that in this value here, you'll just see it as the uh, on the actual damage on the enemy ship. Again, I have a multi-range um, type of solution in that um, torpedoes are easier to get long range, but still you might want fast torpedoes, which are these here, which are fairly small. This is this is a fairly small torpedo, but it's quite manoeuvrable and it's going to get up to quite a good speed. It still didn't have a reasonable range, even, um, let me just see, with one fuel tank and, you know, a, a slightly above normal speed, so it's got about a 40 second uh, thrust du duration, it will get out to about the two and a half thousand meters maybe a little bit further than that um, but I have it set for two and a half thousand so that's going to be my for one of a better word fast interceptor now I, I've seen a lot of people like their torpedoes to be fast and I'm more make it accurate than anything else um, it this doesn't have a signal processor on it so it could get decoyed away um, so its main task is to turn on target also doesn't have a um, targeting uh, advanced targeting on this we've just got a one turn instead of predictive targeting again that's semi um, on purpose I like the fact in some ways that a torpedo will um, in this case if it's going side on to a target it will chase the rear of the target which ends up taking out the propulsion so it can actually be beneficial to not always have the the targeting um, uh, prediction on this particular missile. I'm going to show the other torpedoes as well. So this is my large torpedo. Now the large torpedo, as you can see, many more um, uh, blocks but also very expensive. Now I'll put a bit of EMP in there although it's not a hundred percent effective and the explosive is still the best one. Um, over a certain amount of explosives it's um, a diminishing return so putting a little bit of EMP can mean you might pick out some items inside the ve vessel which um, are susceptible to EMP. Um, again you could take out the um, if it's using a normal propeller you might take out the propulsion. This does use a target prediction because this big uh, torpedo I don't want to have a chance to miss. It is much slower a uh, speed of a um, um, torpedo but it's got a long range and it also has a proximity fuse so I don't want it to slightly miss. It's got a signal processor so it's unlikely to get decoyed. The ballast tanks have a slight downward 
tilt so that they will actually try to come in underneath into the bottom of a vessel rather than just trying to hit the the thick side it will try to hit the underneath um, and it's not that maneuverable so again we would use this against slow big targets um, potentially then the third missile or some uh, torpedo I like to use is a rocket assisted torpedo now this uses the ability to have a thruster in the first block and then a secondary torpedo propeller um, this has some advantages it gets out to range quite quickly it also comes down on a target so if um, you have your own ships it's less likely to hit your own vessel after firing I find sometimes with torpedoes especially sideways firing when they come round they can actually sometimes impact your own ship or your friendly ships on the way to a target a rocket assisted one basically with the short range we give it a start delay so it shoots up into the air it will start to aim towards the target then it will fire the short range thruster for a couple of seconds which will fire it in the direction of the target going above your own ships um, and then land in the area of the target so we'll see that that heading around you'll see the one turn is set for about 250 you can change that depending on what sort of range this is this is aimed at being a relatively short range um, uh, missile in comparison to the uh, other two so we will fire these off at a couple of submarines so we can see what the anti-submarine uh, capacity is like on these we can see that the enemy has also fired we've got uh, uh, incoming missiles but uh, we fired our first two missiles out and they're heading quite nicely into the Pontus now again sonar is a random block targeting it doesn't target a specific enemy block it just randomly uh, picks a target um, to aim for now that he is drop dropping signals but, but with the signal processor we're not getting decoyed and uh, the torpedo should still be heading out and we can also you can see those black lines are actually the rocket fired torpedoes you can see they're now firing and then coming down into the water where they will then pick up a target to go for and we've already taken out that, that uh, Pontus, so I'll bring in an, another one. Now you can extend the range of that one turn so that they um, go into the water further away. Uh, basically, you have to make sure you've got enough time in the regulators in the missile to give it time to launch up fire into the water and head to its target but uh, they tend to be much faster missiles being those small missiles um, and they can yeah they can take out targets quite nicely but they generally wear down a target with just the volume over size as we saw the big missiles have the ability to take out some of these large vessels in a few hits effectively so next we have the surface to air section of missiles now this is more difficult for missiles than surface vessels surface vessels generally are slower and less erratic in movement they can be erratic but generally they're erratic in just two planes um, whereas uh, aircraft and uh, flying vehicles tend to be erratic in three dimensions also um, personally I think you can't go with reality in the in reality um, missiles have quite a high maneuverability for their speed in real life um, 
this the size of their directional planes is quite substantial to their overall size and weight which gives them a very high degree of maneuverability in real life in from the depths unfortunately aircraft uh, control surfaces are many factors increased um, for their actual size that their directional control for the amount of surface area of controls is higher so you can get some very as i'm sure you've seen in some of the the craft very erratically moving aircraft that can actually turn even at the same speed can turn faster than a missile whereas in reality if, if you had a, a, a missiles can can turn faster than an aircraft even at multiple max speeds uh, but that's not the case here so again going back to the way i set up my missiles again i have three zones of control long range zone the long range zone is is again um large missiles for me i want to try and get a single hit kill on um, aircraft if i can and i tend to do this in uh, two potential ways first is um the high speed missile so long range for me for aircraft is only out about the 3000 meters assuming they're coming in actual range of the missile might only be about two and a half but we can fire at 3000 assuming they're coming in straight and we're you know the missiles going to be heading within a meter about in the middle now i tend to go for quite high speeds here so we've got a max speed of 196 meters a second um it's not highly maneuverable it's got a reasonable amount of maneuvering with the fins uh, the thrust ramps up over to get distance it ramps up over quite a long time uh, so the first thousand or fifteen hundred meters it's just speeding up to its highest possible speed which will mostly be even higher than the 196 we have signal processor and target prediction on these and we do use the turning thruster um, I need these to turn and have that as they're coming into the target to have that ability to quickly change their direction to basically counter the um, the enemy ship and uh, enemy vessel if it does move erratically um, another change I tend to do is I tend to use fragments on air to air um, or surface to air missiles the reason is what I'm trying to do on on surface vessels I'm trying to kill on air vehicles what I'm trying to do is just take out enough of the flight controls and or engines so that it goes into the water or loses control that's all I'm trying to do I'm not necessarily trying to kill it if I can kill it good um, but it's my primary focus is to wound it so that possibly guns and or other missiles can take it out if it goes in the water the other way I take out uh, long-range missiles is um, similar sort of maneuverability but this one basically um, has is a chase missile it's a lot slower 138 meters a second but it's got twice the life expectancy this is going to go 40 seconds whereas the other is only 20. the idea being this will chase down a target um, over if it turns away or it goes behind there is a chance this will turn around and hit the target again if i give it a couple of targets we will see how that runs again i'm going against the white flayers so we'll go against some of their better aircraft so we've given it a target of three fairly fast enemy ships which have some re some erratic maneuvering as you can see so they will try to target in and we've got one hit um one miss but that ch is chasing so it's coming back to chase the target and got it on the chase um and then i think some of the sh short range missiles did actually come in as well um 
so that showed that both missiles did work one got it on the initial head-to-head -head and one got it on the chase so the, both systems work so giving it the chase allowed it to miss the initial attack turn around and get it on the return now one of the issues with the radar uh, missiles which i was using here although they have got a full 360 degree targeting they will automatically just go for the largest target and sometimes you want to it means if there's a larger target out there um, they will go for that instead of possibly the aircraft you want them to actually attack for a medium range missile i have selected the infrared seeker rather than the radar uh, the reason for that is that instead of going for the largest target it'll go for the hottest in the direction it's aimed at now if a large hot target is behind the aircraft you're aiming at it will still go for the large vessel but once the um, aircraft is at an angle or not directly behind the um, large vessel you'll find that the um, missiles will start to go for the aircraft instead so again here the infrared missiles are going for the main ship first but you'll notice as they got close to the aircraft they actually did start redirecting because the aircraft effectively became a hotter target because of distance and the angle off the nose so it did help it doesn't doesn't totally alleviate as you can see this is still going for the the uh, target over there the, the hotter target but now that these are close and off angle these are starting to aim for it unfortunately if they miss they will go for the hotter target um, it is a problem with all of the signal based systems in that they will just go for the whichever is the biggest signal in the direction they're aiming and you just got to hope to be honest that that is the target you want um, guns just use whatever is defined by your um, AI targeting computer missiles are being autonomous have to work with whatever is in front of them uh, so it shows the the effect of off angle and you know targeting based upon signal sizes finally is the close range now you've got things like the auto cannon here which is quite happily having a go at close range but i do like to have these turret based short range um infrared missiles now i've not used um the single pixel which is a, a potential it does make them faster using the single pixel but i li still like having target prediction and single pixel you can't use target prediction and to sort of get a guaranteed hit for certainly surface to ground i like to use the uh, target prediction it gives me a, a better better hit rate so these are basically very close range uh, missiles and they're set to the s each side of the ship so they only fire rather than having these as vertical launch these are um, basically firing only at targets on the particular side now one advantage of this is if a plane passes overhead it will shoot into the tail of the um, enemy vessel and we'll see that in a second so we've got an initial firing of the uh, uh, missiles for the head-on attack which have got they're quite fast and has taken out a one of the vessels and now that it is going across the vessel the second launch is basically at the rear of the vessel so that has a very good high accuracy and high rate of chance to hit with most types of target even quite fast uh, targets so overall that's a look at the surface to air missile types i like to use um are they perfect far from it they're just 
basic ideas that I have for missiles um, to to basically pathfinds it. Short range missiles are short, high and maneuverable. Um, they don't have much of a warhead. They're just trying to knock out a little bit of um, the vessel, um, enemy ship's maneuverability. Medium missiles have slightly more warhead. Um, again, infrared but again very highly maneuverable to try to get the erratic ships um, aircraft and then as I said the longer range ones you can have either they're still more maneuverable than uh, surface but they're again just trying to knock something out of the vessel to make it um, uh, easier to hit for the follow-on missiles all in all I think guns are better if you want to target a particular ship because it uses whatever you've set in your AI's targeting um, target priorities to aim at a target and not just the uh, um, signal strength but that being said uh, yeah, missiles are autonomous so you can fire them once they're fired they will quite happily go and just find a target and attack it if it hits the wrong target oh well as long as it does hit a target is the important bit. Uh, now, some people do use the guidance systems, or the guidance uh, 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 parts for remote guidance. But, as I said, I'm not a fan of these remote guidance in general. Uh, it does work, but it does rely on your ship having very good targeting. I think for air-to-air -air missiles, I think use the infrared, etc. Go with the fact, yes, if you're in a mixed environment, you're going to have to allow that sometimes it's going to tar target the wrong vessel. But, you know, as long as it's targeting a vessel in range, that's the most important part. Any other thoughts on missiles you might have, please leave in the comments below. I tend to adapt, these have been tested against the white flares. So when I come against something like say lightning hoods or steel striders, I may have to change the dynamics of some of these missiles. But the basic principles will be the same. I will have a short, medium and long range and they'll be focused on um, uh, light damage highly maneuverable but the maneuverability may change a little bit um, a medium range chaser um, usually um, infrared but the, the slightly more damage and then a long range damaging high speed missile um, the other type I haven't shown here is the single pixel now I do use the single pixel but generally I use them on aircraft as a very short range high you know to get the maximum speed I'm not worried about it getting decoyed this is the aircraft is chasing behind an enemy or a target and at very close range fires a load of very high speed it's almost like using a shotgun of small missiles so I do use that in that particular environment but for the surface to air I like the target prediction and trying to be a little bit more accurate. I need to take out those aircraft as, as my ship is going to get bombed by it. So I need to have a maximum amount of um, missiles with a good hit rate. On an air-to-air -air system, I tend to feel that the aircraft's going to be dodging itself. So we need a good hit rate, but it's not the most important part. Um, <laughs> I would say it's not important. I know sometimes we'll mix, but we'll do that maybe in a different missile, in a different video. I'm, I'm prevaricating once again. As always, leave comments below. Keep playing the game and have fun.